and Conda Davidson. We are officially live uh, from Conda's from Missouri, Lake of the Ozarks. Um, she is our lake. We'll, we'll just call you the Lake Queen, Queen of the Lake of uh, Lake Ozarks, Missouri, uh, Lake of the Ozarks. And I am Mike Wall, your gracious host here today. I'm so excited to be sharing Conda's story. We've got so much to dive into. Um, Conda, let's start off by talking a little bit about like, um, and you and I talked a little bit beforehand, so I know some of the backstory with your husband being a builder and so forth. But let's talk about um, your journey into real estate first. Talk a little bit about that. Okay. Um, about 2000, the year 2000, I was graduating from the University of Missouri with my doctorate degree and I was going to start becoming a professor. And my husband had just gotten a large building job here at the lake to build the largest condominium project ever built here at the time. And so they needed somebody to help him with the marketing, sales, accounting, everything that that dealt with the selling the condos. And I had never, I kind of dabbled in real estate a little bit. I was a teacher in the past. And so I'd kind of dabbled in it, thought, wow, that's, that's kind of exciting. So I went and interviewed with the people and they, you know, they made me an offer. Of course it was tied to commission and that was new to me. Yeah. Um, I'm like, no, no, no way. I'm not going commission. And they ended up working with me and I, I took the job and my husband built a 108 unit condo project of which I was the listing agent on all of those condos and ended up selling about half of them myself. So that was really my initial start into real estate. I, I was partners with a couple of the developers on the real estate end of it. Um, and then about, oh, probably seven years into that, um, I had built a pretty good client base. Um, people buying and selling those condominiums and another local real estate agent, his name was Ryan Gattermeyer. He was president of the Missouri state um, board of realtors last year. Mm -hmm. um, he had been kind of looking for something different to do too. My journey was kind of ending at that condo project. So the partnership with those developers was kind of ending. They weren't doing, they weren't going to do another project. So Ryan and I teamed up and thought, you know, Everybody said it didn't. It it was a partnership that didn't make any sense because. Yeah, he was, he was the yin to your yang. Oh. Because he found it, you know, and, and before that, he actually found Tiger Leads, which was the lead system that our company had went with previously. Yeah. I'll never forget. He came back from the National Association of Realtors um, convention and he, he came back and he was so excited. Every time he goes to those, he comes back and he's just all pumped up and he's like, I found something. We have to do it. We have to absolutely do it. And I'm like, what, 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 what is it? He said, it's, it's a lead system. He said, it's the latest thing. He said, they're going to actually advertise on, on a computer and people are going to be in other states, which a lot of our buyers here in our area come from remote areas. They come yeah. from Texas, Kansas City, Des Moines, Chicago. So he said they can be sitting on their computer, you know, wherever they are, and they can type in Lake of the Ozarks real estate. And we're going to be able to capture those people. And I'm like, really? That sounds that 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 sounds too good to be true. And he's so he talked me into doing the webinar. Yeah did it. And of course, the next day I come into the office and he's like, well, what'd you think? And I'm like, well, I thought it looked really good, Ryan. But I said, you know, how much is it? And he said, $5,000 a month. And I'm like, I had a heart attack. I'm like, <laughs> I said, where in the world are we going to get $5,000 a month? He said, well, you know, we've got some money saved up. And I said, well, yeah, we have money saved up. But I said, it's not going to take us very long to run through that money if we don't have sales. He goes, oh, we'll have sales. We'll have sales. Um, so I, I jumped in with them at, with the Google AdWords when they first became a big deal. And Tiger Leeds, I don't know if you know much about them. but they Oh, yeah. Were, Howard Tager? Yes. He, yeah. he, he will tell you about me that I was the most grueling client he ever had because we were the 24th or 25th client, I think. Um, that they had. And I called all 24 other clients before I jumped in because I wanted to see what their experience had been like. Um, and it ended up being, I mean, they were wonderful. They were such a uh, client based, um, you know, company that it was just so awesome. If we needed something, they were there to help us. 
Um, of course, you know, then they got bought out by Sync, which is not a terrible thing. We still use the Sync platform too. Um, but that EXP reminds me a lot of that because of their 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 dedication and their commitment to their agents. It to me, it just reminds me of the same type of platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and they and certainly they were, were a very forward thinking company, um, and um, they were doing internet lead generation. I, I think they were probably one of the first ones to do it, but um, certainly they did it well. And, and then obviously the the waters got pretty muddy over the next decade or decade and a half. But um, okay, so tell me, so you connected with um, with your who's the the gentleman Ryan, who's still your partner now, right? And right. He's he's a he's a fellow EXP agent. So he okay. and another partner, um, Ed Schmidt, who's also EXP. We were the three owners of Gadamire Davidson Real Estate. There were three of us, and it was the largest independent company here at the lake. We were doing about a hundred million a year. Okay. Um, we had about probably probably 12 full-time agents um, ranging in volume from anywhere from 2 million up to, we had a few of them doing, you know, probably six to 8 million. And then yeah. me and the other two partners were doing anywhere from 15 to 20 million a year. Okay. That's good production. And so what, what, what company were you guys at then? That was called Gadamire Davidson. It was an okay. independent brokerage, kind of a, kind of a boutique type brokerage. Okay. And so, What's great is like, you know, you bring agents on and I talk to a lot of different agents who are joining from, you know, um, the big box brands, the traditional brokerages. And, and I talk a lot to people who are joining from Indies too, um, like you guys and, um, you know, uh, Al Stasek, Jay Kinder, Kyle Whistle, Dan Beer. Well, Dan actually came over from KW, but Kyle had his own brokerage. Um, I, I'm curious for you though, um, you know, most people, the myth for most people is that when you run your own brokerage, you've essentially reached the pinnacle of, of a real estate career, right? Because you're, you know, you're writing your own checks. So tell me why that's not true. Well, it, that was a big factor with us joining. We were very successful and we were making quite a bit of a bottom line profit that we were then splitting between the three of us. But along with that, what you have to remember, it comes a lot of headaches a lot of headaches that EXP has taken away, keeping up with technology, trying to find the latest, greatest thing. We had three full-time employees calling in sick, couldn't cover the phones, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that, you know, insurance, the fact that we, our butts were the ones on the line if something went wrong and us keeping all of our agents in line. You know, now that EXP is is kind of the, the mothership of the whole thing and they have much more, many more tools to handle all of that so that we can focus on what we do, which is to sell real estate. Yeah. Um, and the other thing was I, I put every, every agent that worked for our company, I put their production into a spreadsheet before we joined. Mm -hmm. And I did a spreadsheet with how much money they made with their splits with Gadamire Davidson and all, you know, any expenses they might've had. And then I did a spreadsheet with what they would have made with that same amount of production if they would have been with EXP. And it was so amazing to me. And I'll do that with anybody that we talk to that is thinking about coming over just to show them what the difference is going to be. But every one of our agents, regardless of volume, made 25% more. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And they may not have seen that initially, right? And But it, it, it became more evident, obviously, as you started to do your due diligence and you actually sat down and broke it out and was able to have a conversation and show them that, right? And I'm assuming you did that because you wanted to be able to communicate the message loud and clear. Right. I wanted them, I didn't want them to think we were just doing this for us because I think that's the biggest obstacle we face as agents trying to attract other agents. I'm trying to attract other agents because I know it's the best company that anybody could possibly work for. But people look at it like you're trying to attract them because it's going to benefit you. You're going to get them in your downline. You're going to be able to make money off them. And that's really the small part of the whole picture. The big part is that it's the best company they could possibly work for building their own image. They don't have to worry about building an image for somebody else, having the best tools, making the best splits, I mean, I, I figured it up. We joined. I joined in April 1st of 2017. Mm -hmm. I became an icon in November of 2017. They gave me my stock back and I figured up my 
uh, from April 17 or April 1, 17 to April 1, 18, my bottom line commission split was 104% given the value of my stock. Now I don't have that yet, but if I would consider the value of my stock, I made more than 100% commission for working for a company that I love. So they paid you 4% to work there, essentially. And more than that, because that's <laughs> what the stock was worth the day I did it. Now, yeah. um, we know the stock fluctuates up and down, and it could be worth it could be worth just what it was when they gave it to me, which it's still worth more. I didn't pay for it. Right. What's yeah. the harm in that? They're, they gave me something, you know? And I want people to understand how powerful that actually is, because, you know, there are people working at, uh, traditional brokerages, right? And some of them don't even have a cap. In, in other words, they may be on a 60-40 or a 70-30 split um, that pays in year after year after year. And 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 what I what agents are starting to see it is I, I I think they're starting to see is there's not a lot of value for that. So that's that's one piece of it, right? Is an, an indefinite split. And then there's and then there's your uh, and then Coal Banker in our area is combating that. And then there's Keller Williams. I think Coal Banker in our area has a $50,000 split, but they have a 6% royalty that never goes away. Um, and then and then there's other other companies like Berkshire Hathaway. I don't think they have a split or I mean, a, excuse me, a, a cap. Um, your Keller Williams is of the world. Um, and then, you know, where you're paying, uh, you have a, you know, a $24,000 um, cap plus royalty. And then, you know, then you have your remaxes of the world, essentially, where you're just, it's no value at all from the company, high commission split, but you're paying an indefinite royalty fee. And we've done the math there. If we did over a hundred transactions, we would have paid in like $55,000. So um, what, what was it that really just resonated with you? Because I mean, Conda, let's face it, you've probably had multiple opportunities to change companies over the last 10 years, right? I mean, Remax came along, Keller Williams came along, every name, you know, you've heard it, right? What was it specifically about EXP that really that really prompted you to look into this and then eventually make the change? I mean, I think it was a it was several factors. There wasn't one, but just just understanding Glenn Sanford's thinking process of turning the whole real estate industry kind of upside down and adapting it to the other changes that are going on in our world. So the just what they say, the Amazons, the Netflix, the the Ubers, the you know, when you see that when you see the fact that really real estate doesn't need a bricks and mortar. I mean, we have a nice offer here, office here and we kind of treat it like a Regent Center. So we rent our office space to our agents at a reasonable price and it allows them to keep functioning like that. Mm -hmm. But to me, it was it was the whole thing. It was the fact that I think Glenn Sanford is a genius in my mind. Mm -hmm. I think what he has came up with is absolutely phenomenal. And then when you go to the events and you see the level of agents that are there and you see the collaboration, and I've been on the ICON vetting committee now for the last six months because I was an ICON last year and they transitioned that into kind of a new systematic way because Vicki Bartholomew used to do all of the vetting and it got to the point you can't vet that many people. You know, you don't have enough hours in the day. So they had about 15 of us, 15 to 20 of us agents that help with vetting those those agents, which just means calling them and having a conversation with them, learning about how are they an ICON? Why are they an ICON? What do they do? And I have learned more from those people that I have vetted. I feel like I gained so much value from those people because I learned things they do, what how yeah. they what they do to build their client base. What do they do to keep their people? And just that whole sharing, everybody is so willing to share at this company that that it's amazing to me. Yeah. Give me an example of some relationships you've built that you may not otherwise would have had the opportunity. Oh, well, I mean, I have a relationship with a few agents. Um, Kathy O'Neill is one in St. Louis. She she was somebody that we ended up um, attracting uh, because she knew one of my partners and she came on board and I went to the Vegas conference with her and I've developed this friendship with her now. And then, I mean, I, I feel like just the people, um, Stacey Onan, I, I do work chat with her a lot. I love the whole workplace work chat. Yeah. I think that's such a unique 
I mean, that's what I mean. The company has so many unique features and unique tech tools that I think the fact that Glenn came from the tech world, and so that's how his brain works, is, is that we've got to figure out the technology that can allow us to let our agents thrive. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that they let you, they encourage you to build your own image. That I always had a problem with that. I didn't want my agents to feel like Gadamire Davidson, my previous company, was the one that controlled their, their listing or their sale. And they didn't view it like that. They viewed it like Conda Davidson is who they're entrusting it with. Mm -hmm. And so anytime you have a, a, a broker above you that really legally in every state, I think the broker owns the listing. Yeah. Well, I don't agree with that. I mean, I, I agree it has to still be like that with EXP, but they allow you to focus on your image and building your image and that you're just brokered by EXP. Mm -hmm. You know, you're still they want you. They encourage you. You build the Conda Davidson team. You don't you don't worry about building. I mean, we will all want the EXP image to get to be known more and people to recognize it. But they want you to focus on building your own image. Right. And I think that's that's really, really important. That was a that was really something that, you know, when we joined, um, that was something that was really unexpected for us, though. But it probably has been become um, the, it probably has become the most important reason why we stay is because um, of the, the collaboration. It's just, it, it has taken our business um, to just a, a whole different level to be able to tap into some of the people that have joined this company now just in the last 12 months. I mean, holy cow. Right. We're talking about, I mean, there's a large percentage of uh, the Wall Street Journal's, you know, top 100 agents already in in EXP's uh, model. And so what what I'm so excited about is to, I still feel like we're getting in on this fairly early. I mean, we have we just passed 15,000 agents. I mean, is that is that is that fair to say? Right. I mean, I, I think it is. I mean, I think we, we're working on trying to attract some other agents in our area. Um, and they said, you know, that's what they say. Well, you know, we didn't get in on the beginning. I'm like, it's still the beginning guys. I said, we are going to be the largest real estate company in the world. We're going to be, it may take five years, may take 10 years, but we're going to be the largest. And so how many agents do you think we'll have to be the largest? And we have 15,000 right now. Yeah. You, you still have plenty of time to get in and, and, build your own image while you're building this great company and reap the rewards. I mean, I have the perfect example of, we have an agent here and he, he really, he's a bartender by, I mean, he should be a bartender. He loves bartending. He should own his own restaurant, but he can't support his family by being a bartender. So he sells real estate and he's very good. His name's Dan Ralston. He's about a six to $8 million producer. So pretty good producer. Yeah. And so he, he just never has been one that, you know, he just kind of flies by the seat of his pants, gets his, commission checks, you know, pays his payments. But when he joined EXP, we convinced him it would be really smart to do the stock purchase, you know, out of his commission. You'll yeah. never miss it. It'll allow you to start building a retirement plan. So he did. He joined the same day I did, April 1st. So it was about, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago, I, I went into him and I said, hey, Dan, I said, if you look to see, you know, how much money you have in your stock account, he's like, what do you mean? I said, you know, have you gotten into your enterprise account? because I preach to him all the time. I'm kind of like the mother hen. I'm like, you know, yeah. get into your enterprise account and look and see where your transactions are and look and see how much stock you have. You've gotten some stock awards. Um, and he goes, no, I, I don't have to do that. And I said, I want to show it, come and show you how to do that. And I said, you, you're going to write it down because it's going to be easy for you to do it. So I went in, brought it up. We exported it to Excel. We did our summing, came up with, with how much money he had. Bottom line, it said he had like $50,000. He's like, he, he about had a heart attack. Wow. He's like, oh my God. He goes, that can't be right. He goes, do it again. So we went back, we exported it again, we added it again, came up with the same number, you know, looked up what the EXP stock was worth that day. Same amount, like 48,000 something. He's like, are you telling me that I have that much money? And I said, yes, I'm telling you, you have that much money. He said, well, well what should I do with it? I said, well, I'm not going to tell you what you should do with it. I said, what you should do with it is call your, your stock broker and tell him that this is an this is a part of your what you're building for your retirement, which 
real estate agents have never had the ability to do without doing it on their own. They don't have somebody helping them do it. Yeah. So the fact that 5% of his commissions is coming out, which he barely misses, he's buying them at a 20% discount. He's doing it steadily, which is what every stockbroker tells you to do. Do it even so that you don't, you know, buy in the, the only the lows and sell in the highs, you know, yeah. you have to do it even. That's my husband's a big proponent of that. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he continues to do it. And he's now striving to be an icon. Um, you know, I don't know if he'll make it this year or not, but it gives people something to strive for because then they're going to be getting that many more shares of stock. So there's just, there's so many, I mean, that's what we're really focusing on with some of the agents we're trying to attract is that Glenn really has tried to create a way that something that we've never had, which is an exit strategy for real mm -hmm. estate. You know, you can't sell your database. Your database is you, yeah. you know, your clients are not going to be sold. You can't sell your database, you right. know, but you can buy shares of stock and attract people to a company that why would you not want to attract them to this company? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I, I and it, it just blows my mind that people just have such a closed mind. You know, I'm, I'm kind of going about it differently now. I'm just trying to get people just to open mindedly have lunch with me and let me tell them about the model. You know, I'm not trying to tell them it's the right for, thing for them to do right now, but I think it's it's not very smart of them to not understand the model. And there may be a time that it would be the right thing for them to do. Yeah, man, there's a lot there. So great story, by the way. Holy cow. I mean, what's really cool is that, you know, we're doing the exact same thing we would be doing if we were at any other company. We're still selling real estate. He didn't even know. He was building up, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars in in company stock, and now he's probably just beside himself, excited that he has the opportunity to do uh, even more and and continue to to take out that twenty or that five percent contribution and buy stock at at a twenty percent discount. So, I mean, that's a great story, you know. To your point on recruiting or attracting, right? Um, I think that. I, you're you're right. I mean, I I feel like long gone are the days where you would just call somebody randomly and say, "Hey, have you heard about EXP?" Um, unless you had built a relationship with that individual, or if you had credibility or influence. Okay, and right. the way that you create credibility or influence, um, there are a couple ways you can do that. Actually, um, the first way. Uh, is to sell a lot of real estate and for everybody to know you, right? So right. If, you, if you're one of the top real estate agents in your entire city or your state or the country, people will know you. So that will create some level of influence and credibility, right? So if you make a phone call, people are like, whoa, you know, Conda Davidson's calling me. She's one of the top agents in the entire area or state. Uh, number two is to provide a uh, a level of education or um, uh, or or mentorship or coaching, um, create uh, content that people will consume that will also create credibility or influence for you through a different channel, right? An, an educational channel, and and so those are really the two. I mean, I think moving forward. Um, you really want to focus your efforts and anybody for that matter, anybody who's growing a team um, or trying to attract individuals. Uh, I think that the new digital um, currency is going to be co the content you create. And so, you know, I'm heavily making an investment in creating uh, educational video, um, podcast, interviews like this. Um, giving agents like you a platform to be able to come on and share their story in hopes that, you know, you'll not only be able to use this, but I'll be able to use this as well. And, you know, hopefully there are individuals out there who will hear this and connect directly with you because of your story. And right. so, and what, I mean, I just have to thank you for what you're doing because I think it's, I've actually shared your podcast now with everybody in our local. Um, we, we've been, we've started having, um, two times a, a month, we've started having just a get together and we focus on something. We focus on either attracting or we focus on like tomorrow, we have a new one that we've actually contracted with somebody with KB Core to give us an hour long training session, just kind of individually one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have probably about 20 people there. Yeah. But I kind of focused on because it's such a switch for people to go from being in an office where you have 
a lot of face to face time with people, a lot of, you know, to EXP's model, which is that you can just work from home. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of agents that just had they're having a tough time with that. You know, they, they feel like they need some more face to face. So um, I started organizing and in, in having twice a week, twice a month just a, a get together at our board office so that we have enough room. They have a, a screen that we can bring the bring it up on the you know, this could be up on the screen if we were there. Yeah. Um, but just to give people I feel like the more we can get EXP to succeed and we can get agents to succeed. Even if they're not somebody I attracted, it's just helping all of us. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm trying to look at it is I feel like, you know, like your your interview that you did with the Franklin group. Oh, yeah. my God. I I still use that because they're our, we're, our biggest competitor here is Remax. Yeah. I mean, Remax is huge in our area. They are they have probably probably about 25 percent of the market. So they have about probably six mega teams at the. And I look at the people in those mega teams at Remax, mm -hmm. and I just think to myself, you know, some of those people I'm really good friends with, I do deals with them all the time, that I just look at them and I think, man, what a better position they would be in for their long-term retirement goal if they would even consider switching over to EXP yeah. because of just what, what they would bring. You know, they, they most of them have six to 10 people on their team and they, they do anywhere from 30 to 60 million a year, you know, so they're just, they're, they're super, super productive, you know, teams. And they, they view that, that Remax image is really, really, really important to them in this market. And, and it may be at, for the time being, but my point to a lot of them is that's going to start changing over time because yeah. agents are going to see the benefit of being with a company like EXP. And a lot of them have moved over to KW we have a pretty big KW here too. Yeah. And I think we'll start gaining some of those people too, that, you know, the model is just not quite what they thought it was going to be. And once they do understand the difference between the KW model and the EXP model, yeah. I feel like that, I mean, once you really study it, um, you, you see the difference, you know, at, at first glance, people say, Oh no, it's a, you know, it's a multi-level marketing thing. You know, it's a profit share. I'm like, no, 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 it's not, you know, you need to study it and then have a conversation about what the differences are because there are big, big, big differences. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think a lot of it goes back to look at not just within your market. See, I think what realtors have a tendency to do is really they, they, they just, they have an understanding of what's going on in their local market. Right. And, and why that's, that's all well and good. You definitely want to have an understanding of what's going on in your local market, probably first and foremost, but you definitely want to have your, you want to have an understanding of what's going on uh, 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 statewide and then also nationwide and potentially even globally. Right. And so when you look around and you see some of the top agents in the United States, right. right. Bringing their entire brokerages over then you start to wonder. And so I'm curious if, if if what's going on in your marketplace is that, you know, maybe folks just have the blinders on right now and they business is good, right? There's really right. and some people, you know, when, when business is good, they don't they don't manage anything other than what's going on in the day to day operations. In other words, they don't look any, at any any other opportunities because, you know, what they say, what good is the enemy of great, right? And and so they they just continue on this path of doing good. And that's, you know what, that's okay. You know, it's, it's it, 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 I guess it's not for everybody, but I I feel like you do that. If if people are really, if, they, if they're calling themselves business people, business owners, then you're right. They owe it to themselves to be open-minded enough to at least look into it and then run their business model into this business model and see what it looks like comparatively speaking. Don't you agree? I totally, totally agree. And and to your point, I mean, one thing that that we've really had to kind of open ourselves up to is you get your blinders on and you only think about because that's really the people you have relationships with are the yeah. people in your market. But like Missouri is really starting to open up some other areas right now. Um, Columbia, I think we just joined their board. Jefferson City, which is about 30 miles away. Springfield, which is about an hour and a half away. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the hard thing about that is just developing a relationship with somebody that you feel like 
I mean, I have a few agents that I've done referrals with back and forth that I feel like they at least know me and respect me because they know I'm a good agent. Um, but that's the hard part is that's the areas I think that it would really benefit to start attracting in that area because they don't have a base yet. You know, yeah. when we came here and we brought our hundred million dollar private brokerage team over, we immediately attracted another small boutique brokerage that was in a little town not too far away for the very same reason. She was tired of doing, tired of having employees, tired yeah. of having yeah. to see everything. So they came over and he was an icon agent this year too, which is perfect. Um, and then we attracted a fairly large team at Remax, which we thought would give us a little bit of momentum there that we might attract some other people. I mean, so far, but I think people are watching. I think that's people, people kind of lose sight of every little thing that happens. I try to post it on either Facebook or LinkedIn. Yeah. You know, when Pampert was voted the, one of the top CEOs when we reached 15,000 agents, you know, when I became an icon for the second year this year, I mean, I don't, I don't do it to say, oh, look at me, rah, rah, rah. I do it to say, look at this opportunity, this company, right. is doing, you know, that they don't have to do that, but they're choosing to do that. Yep. yep. And sometimes it's not no, it's just not right now. Right. And we, we know that. Um, I think we get a lo little overzealous, especially um, be because we understand the opportunity now, especially uh, since we're here and the dust has settled on our transition and we know what um what's what lies before us and and it is truly excited I, I i talked to somebody last week and i i i talked about it remember that feeling when we got out of bed um uh when we were little kids and we were it was christmas morning and you and you would go downstairs and your parents would have stuff under the tree remember what that felt like it feels almost like that when you wake up every day because there is just with fifteen thousand agents we get to share this story and we we're literally like the gentleman that works for you we're literally literally changing people's lives financial lives right that guy's got fifty thousand dollars in stock in one year right right it's crazy i know it's just like last year when i went to new orleans and they or, or las vegas and they brought the very first icons so the very first icons would have became icons in 2014 because they had to vest for three years. So they brought them up on the stage in Vegas in 2017. And I think it was in the spring is when they did it, when they had that market. I can't remember if it was in the spring or fall, but they brought them up on the stage. They were the very first icons. It was a husband and wife team. And they had been given their $14,000 worth of company stock whenever you know, wherever they achieved it in 2014 and they were giving them, releasing their award. They had bought the stock at 35 cents a share and it, I forget what it was at, but it was worth $490,000. Oh and goodness. the people literally stood on the stage and said how it had, which literally it would, it's like winning the lottery. Yeah. It had, literally, And they said, you know, that was for us just doing what we do. We just, yeah. we just did what we did. We just kept selling real estate. And, you know, they told us they were, and I can't, I'll never forget when Ryan told me about the icon program because he and I and Ed are all three pretty big. We, I do about 20 million. They do about, well, Ed's doing that this year. So we all do the volume to be an icon. And when he told me that it was possible that, you know, we're going to pay this 16,000 in to cap out, and then we're going to get our hundred percent commission from that point on. And then if you do 20 transactions, if you're an individual, if you pay 5,000 in after that, they're going to give you that 16,000 back in company stock. And I just looked at him kind of like I looked at him when he told me about tiger leads and I'm like, I'm not going to do that. And he goes, yeah, yeah, it's right. It's in the black and white. It's right there in the, you know, you need to read that. It's in the black and white. So I read it and sure enough, you know, then when I, <laughs> sure enough, I become an icon and, you know, it takes, it takes about a month for it to show up in your account, but sure enough, there it was in my account. Yeah. I'm that like, that's insane. Great. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious for you, obviously you, you've been doing it for a while now and, and obviously you've, you've done really, really well. What is, what is, what does the future look like for you guys at EXP? Well, I mean, I want to really, what I want to do is, is I want to kind of step back and, and maintain a, a reasonable production, but I want to help some other agents get, I mean, that's why I've started doing these educational things here. Cause we, we do have some agents that, 
you know, they, they don't, they weren't lucky enough to have a hundred unit condo project to, to, to kickstart their real estate career. Sure. I mean, that's my intel. So I can kind of coast with, with clients and referrals and things like that, but I really want to help them. And that's probably the, I mean, my PhD is in education. So that's probably the education part of me that wants to help them determine how to build their career so they could be in the same position, you know, after a few years, they could be in the same position of building, you know, what do you have to do to, and that's why we're doing the KV core training tomorrow is, yeah. you know, yeah. what do you do with a new lead and, and what is it important to do? And, and I think we all know what it's important, but I think you have to tell people, tell people, tell people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so I just want, and then what do you do after you have them as a client? How do you treat them? How do you get through the whole process? How do you communicate with them? And then what do you, what do you do after you sell them? You know, you have to stay in touch with them. And that there's, there's, there's several processes that you have to do. And I think just helping people know what, what processes have enabled me to be a, a, a steady producer and now an icon agent, um, what what did they need to do to get to that point? Mm -hmm. So I just want to help people get to that point. Right. right. And, and so yeah. as we wrap up here, what 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 specifically do you want to communicate to um, brokers and agents who are watching and listening to this podcast who are um, exploring their options or maybe just want to learn a little bit more about EXP? Well, I think they just need to look at it and, and fit it into their model. So, so, you know, and if they need help doing that, I mean, I've helped numerous before the, the Remax people came over. I mean, I sat down with them and said, you know, there's no strings attached here, but you have to understand how these numbers are going to work before you can make a good business decision. Mm -hmm. So I just tell people, let me, you know, share your numbers with me. Let me plug them into a scenario of this is where you would be with EXP. And, and then you determine, is it worth it? Yeah. Is, is it painful, you know, to get everything switched over, but you have to look at the result and say, okay, is this result going to be worth the pain that I'm going to go through for this time period? And then once you go through it, you're through it and you understand all the processes. Yeah. I mean, once you learn sky slope and once you learn, you know, the lead system and once you learn the enterprise system and you see the EXP campus and I mean, once you do it a few times, it's like, that's your new way of doing business, Yeah, you know? And so I think people just need to understand the model and have an open mind. And if, if it's not right for them, it's not right for them, you know? But if you don't, you don't know what you don't know. Right. I wonder if you ask those people who got their icon check on stage that you saw for $498,000 or $498,000. Yeah. I wonder if they, they would think that it was complicated or, the diff, the move was difficult or right. they be singing a different song. <laughs> we all know how people are. They hate change. Everybody hates change. Yeah. Everybody likes status quo, you know, it, it, especially in good times. Like you said, when you're having good times and you're having sales, you know, and I don't know that when you're have not having sales is a good time either. There's just not a good time. There's not a good time. You just have to, you have to look at the model. I mean, if you look at the model, what is it that Jay Kinder said? Once you, Once you see it, you can't see it. Unsee it right? Yeah, exactly. I love right. that. I love that. It is true. Once you see it, you cannot unsee it. But you you owe it to yourself to see it for what it is, and then make that decision. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think to your point, I think I think what you'll start to see happen is I think that our market and in the market nationwide for the most part is starting to soften. And what you see what, or what you will see um, is people will, especially agents who are having success, um, it, when the money or when, when the money's not there, when the profit's not there, that was there over the last three to five years, because the market's been really good for a long time now, is that the first thing people start doing is they start analyzing their cost, right? And right. That, that is a powerful moment to, to uh, to connect with somebody. And so if I think what you'll see is over the next um, 18 months as the market, it's not crashing by any stretch no. of the imagination, but it is softening and it will come back down to earth. And I think what you'll see is those conversations uh, will be much easier to have because people are gonna be holding their costs accountable. Business owners will because the money won't be as readily available as it once was or 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 has been over the last you know uh, three to five um, 
in 10 years, even in some markets. So hold tight. You know, you're you're doing everything, I think, the right way. Um, you you are very uh, you've represented this company really well. And um, you've certainly had some some great ideas. And I think that there are agents out there, no doubt, that will be able to connect with you. Um, I'm curious if, if you want to, um, and, and we'll wrap up here, but if you want to share your contact information uh, for, you know, s for that agent or broker who's listening, uh, who maybe uh, is connecting uh, with your story or has questions about, you know, growing their business, which I'm sure you'd be willing to share, um, how can they get in touch with you? I mean, they can either they can either call me 573-216-0553 or my email is tonda at gotlake.com. It's just G-O-T-L-A-K-E.com. And I'll be happy to keep it confidential. I'll be happy to meet with them. You know, I'll be happy to share anything they want to share. There's nobody going to lock them up and make them do anything. <laughs> but, but it is, I think it is important for every person to understand what they're missing out on. And, you know, I think a lot of people as time goes by, you know, as EXP does become, and I, it's going to be, there's no doubt in my mind, it's going to be a household name and people are going to say, oh yeah, EXP, just like they say other companies now. Yeah. Yeah. And so would you rather be ahead of that than behind it? Absolutely. Well, Conda, it has truly been a pleasure to have you on the show today, especially a couple days before Thanksgiving here. So appreciate you taking some time out and uh, delivering some value to our audience. Thank you. And thanks for what you do. It's valuable. Well, thank you. I appreciate and I hope you keep watching. Thanks. All right. All righty.